Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, we're going to continue our series examining the sections and windows of Logic Pro. In our first episode, we started dissecting the control bar. And because there are just so many important features jam-packed into this light gray section at the top of the screen, we only looked at the views buttons in that first episode. I'll put a link to that video up here in the card if you need to get caught up. Moving on to the next section of the control bar, we find ourselves in the transport section. Now the functions of the transport might seem so obvious as to not be worthy of an entire video. Although it does contain controls found on every audio device known to man, in Logic Pro, it has a few tricks up its sleeve. If we access the customized control bar and display menu by right clicking anywhere in a blank space in the control bar, we can see all of the controls that we can add to our transport section. And as you can see, we have a lot of options to choose from. Remember, we add functions to the control bar sections by selecting the checkboxes in this menu. Of course, we have our standard transport controls. I like to call them VCR controls, but that's probably dating me a bit. Play, pause, stop, fast forward, please be kind, rewind. Okay, now I'm really dating myself. Anyway, those are all very self-explanatory. However, there is one little interesting feature of the pause button. Let's enable the view of that. If we enable a cycle range, start playback, and then hit the pause button in the transport, instead of using the spacebar to stop playback, we can then restart playback without the playhead jumping back to the start of the cycle, as it would with a simple stop start command. It instead continues playback from where we left off, as it would if no cycle range was present. Back in the customize menu, all 10 of these top options control the movement of the playhead and the starting point of playback. Now, to be completely honest with you, I find most of these pretty useless. I find it much simpler to just use my mouse to click in the ruler to move the playhead around the session. But I am a bit more of a mouse heavy logic user than some. So for those of you interested in taking advantage of these transport functions, here's a quick rundown of what each does. First up, go to beginning, which moves the playhead to the start of the project. Same as hitting the return key on the keyboard. Go to position brings up this dialog box that allows you to type in an exact bar or time to send the playhead to. This one actually can be helpful in really long sessions, like for film post-production, for example. Go to left locator moves the playhead to the beginning of the cycle range, whether or not the cycle range is active. And go to right locator moves the playhead to the end of the cycle range. Go to selection start moves the playhead to the beginning of a selected region. Play from beginning starts playback from the beginning of the project. Play from left window edge starts playback from the leftmost visible edge of the main window. Play from left locator starts playback from the beginning of the cycle range, whether or not it's active. Play from right locator starts playback at the end of a cycle range. And play from selection starts playback from the beginning of a selected region. One thing that could be potentially helpful for those of you that do wish to utilize any of these transport features is to know how to assign them to keyboard shortcuts. Simply go to the Logic Pro menu, then Key Commands, and Edit Assignments. Then in this search bar on the left, type in the command that you want to assign to a keyboard shortcut. Let's use Play From Left Locator as an example. Type its name into the search bar, and then select it from the list. Once it's highlighted, come over and click the button labeled Learn by Key Position. Then simply press the keys on your keyboard that you want to assign as the shortcut. Do note that if you choose a keyboard shortcut already in use by Logic Pro, you will get this alert. You can either choose to replace the automatic assignment or hit cancel and try a different combination of keys. And if these 10 controls weren't enough options on playhead movement, we actually can access even more controls by clicking and holding on the play and stop buttons in the control bar itself. The play button contains four options, 
the two defaults, which are play from marquee selection and play from cycle. These just mean that playback will begin at the beginning of a marquee selection or a cycle range when one of those things are active in the session. And fun fact, marquee selection is listed first because it supersedes the cycle range when it comes to playback starting point. If you have both on, playback will start at the beginning of the marquee selection. The other two options, play from selected region and play from last locate, would change the default behavior of playback in that it would resume playback from either the beginning of a selected region or the last place you manually moved the playhead to instead of continuing where you left off. Play from last locate can be helpful if you want to play back over the same section of the song many times without using the cycle. If we click and hold on the stop button, we see we have even more options. Options galore. The first three, stop, stop and go to left locator, and stop and go to last locate position, all change what the playhead does when you hit the spacebar to stop. Stay where it stopped go to the beginning of the cycle range, or go to the last place you manually move the playhead to, respectively. The four jump features control the secondary action of the stop button. You may have noticed that when we hit the spacebar to stop playback, the stop icon in the transport changes into this arrow icon. That indicates the jump feature. What this allows us to do is hit this button while playback is stopped, and jump the playhead between the start of the session and one of four positions, either the beginning of a marquee selection, the beginning of a cycle range, the beginning of a selected region, or the last locate position. So lots of options for you to customize exactly how you want the play stop playhead relationship to be handled. Before we continue on with the video, I've got a free gift just for you. A topic that causes a lot of confusion in Logic Pro are buses. So I've created the definitive guide to buses in Logic Pro. In this comprehensive video guide, you'll learn what buses are, how to use them, and advanced busing techniques. We start with the very basics and go all the way through some pretty advanced stuff. And I truly believe there is something in this video for everyone. So hit the link in the description box below the like button and download your free copy today. Let's move on to the three recording options in the transport because this is where things get super interesting. On our basic record button, we again have a click and hold menu to alter its functionality. First, we have our three record modes. There's the basic record mode, then one called record slash record toggle. This one allows you to stop recording, but continue playback by hitting the record button a second time. You can even restart recording again at a later point in the timeline. And the final mode is called record slash record repeat. This one will allow you to delete a recording, then start the playback and recording over again just by hitting the record button a second time. No need to stop and start over. This one is very helpful, especially if you're a perfectionist like me and you're constantly redoing your recording takes. The next two options are other transport bar options. We'll cover those in a moment. We then have allow quick punch, which is a feature I recommend you always leave on. This allows Logic to record in the background while a track is record enabled. This ensures that when you punch in, you can make that transition seamless by dragging either side of the region or access what you play during the pre-roll or count in. It's a great feature, leave it on and forget about it. The next option, auto input monitoring, is a bit more complicated and it's actually a part of a different section of the control bar as well, which we'll discuss in a future episode. Be sure to get subscribed if you wanna be the first to see that when it comes out. And finally, in this menu, we can access both the general recording settings and the project specific recording settings. Moving on to the next recording feature in the transport and man, it's a goodie free tempo recording. This button allows us to record without a metronome and have Logic Pro automatically analyze the tempo of the performance and apply it to the project. So if you have an idea in your head that you don't know the tempo of or you just aren't comfortable playing to the click track, 
just hit the free tempo record button, perform with your own internal tempo, and when you hit stop, Logic can analyze and apply that tempo to the project. In fact, we get a few different options when we stop a free tempo recording. The first two options will analyze your playing and apply the tempo of your recording to the project. That's what we would use in the scenario I just laid out. The first option will retain any tempo changes you made during recording and create a tempo map. The second option will average out the tempo of your recording and apply a static tempo to the project. Most of the time, the second averaging option is preferred. And do note that this option will quantize your entire performance to that average tempo. The third option, apply project tempo to region, allows us to record without the click and without hearing any other tracks in the session and then have that performance quantized to the existing project tempo. And finally, you can always choose not to analyze the region or change the tempo. Free tempo recording is a fantastic feature and one that I encourage you to play around with, especially when you're getting initial ideas down for a song. It can help to bring out your musicality and expressiveness to lay down an initial piano or guitar track without a click and then build your production around that. Give it a shot. But as much as I love free tempo recording, there is one other recording feature of the transport bar that I absolutely could not live without. And that is capture recording. Imagine this scenario. I bet it's happened to you. You're auditioning different patches in a virtual instrument and you're jamming along to your song. All of a sudden you play something that sounds incredible, but you weren't recording. Never fear. Capture recording is here. The capture recording button or the keyboard shortcut shift R will create a MIDI region with the last thing you played, even if you didn't hit the record button first. Your software instrument track just has to be record enabled. And every time you hit play, a recording is made in the background and you can access that recording with the capture recording feature. It has saved me so many times. Do note though, it only works for software instrument tracks, not audio tracks. And our final two transport bar features deal with the cycle. The first is very straightforward. It turns on and off the cycle range that you have set. But the last option is a bit different. A skip cycle allows us to define a portion of our session that we want Logic to skip on playback. Imagine we want to hear what this arrangement would sound like without the pre-chorus, just going directly from the verse into the chorus. We can set our cycle range over the pre-chorus and then hit the skip cycle button. Now on playback, Logic will jump from the verse right into the chorus, so we can audition this change without actually deleting any regions. And there's actually an even easier way to enable a skip cycle. Just hold down command on the keyboard and click and drag in the cycle bar to create a skip cycle range. We can always change this back to a normal cycle range by clicking the skip cycle button in the transport. There we go. I told you there was more to the transport in Logic Pro than meets the eye. There are a lot of powerful features and workflow designing options in this small section of the control bar. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.